and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun. My name is Matthew Castle, or should that be Matthew Corsell? Because today I've got the old mucker Colin Ahern on the dog and bone, so we can have a chin wag about that Watchdogs Legion. I'm looking for the brass tacks on how this game depicts me beloved London town, and who better than the man who's played three hours of it? So, Colin, does Watchdogs Legion take a Mickey Bliss all over the capital, or does it achieve its sausage roll? I didn't realise Danny Dyer, or maybe Alf Stewart. <laughs> oh, right, f*** off. <laughs> you said doing a London accent. I said I can't do a London accent, but I'll give it a go anyway. It, it was a, a, an admirable effort. I'm from Hampshire. We don't have accents in Hampshire. But Watch Dogs Legion yes. is a game that takes place in a post-Brexit Britain. The country has pretty much gone to absolute shit. There's been a number of bombs that have gone off across the city and goody hacker group, DeadSec, they're being blamed for it. So what you need to do, because you're a part of DeadSec, you need to clear your name. But in this London, you're up against forces like a, a private military company called Albion, which is now policing the streets. There's an intelligence company called SIRS, which is spying on the people of London via CCTV and all that. The city isn't in great shape. You say that, but I have noticed that the theatres in the West End are open which isn't actually on the cards at the moment. They all think they're going to go bankrupt because of COVID. So, you know, that's actually one glimmer of hope. At least the arts are okay. True enough. But the thing is that the people of London aren't necessarily concerned with going to the theatre at the minute. There's a divide that becomes clear if you just take a stroll around the city. You'll see protesters congregating in areas with signs that say things like no jobs, no housing, no rights. And my personal favourite, rents, not tents. But on the flip side of that, you'll see gammon gaining steam as well with their own signs that say things like we want our union back. I'm, I'm not sure if we've ever actually had a game that is this up to date with modern politics. No, our London isn't full of drones surveilling what you're doing that we know of. But it, everything else, it is, it's a decent depiction of modern day London. But remember, Matthew, and this is the important point, this is a Ubisoft game. And if you go off their track record, it probably won't end up saying something worthwhile and will eventually just devolve into, whoa, look at all the cool gadgets you have. Okay, but let's dig into like London itself then. You know, what about like the actual landmarks? You know, did you get to visit any of your old flats or stop in at the Queen's for a spot of tea? Neither, neither. Although thank you very much for calling my old flats London landmarks. <laughs> but London is quite big, so I just didn't get around to it. Well, how much of London is in the game? Is it just central London or does it push out into like residential areas? The city does stretch. Like, you know, it doesn't go into, say... Reading or Essex or the kind of surrounding areas. Oh, no, no, I wasn't expecting to go all the way to bloody Re No, but I, I, I wondered if it would have, like, Abbey Road, for example. Given that it does feature a lot of the postcard locations, I'd be surprised if it didn't have Abbey Road. It is a condensed version of London, and you they've put everything in there that you would expect to be there, but it's just everything's maybe a little bit closer than you'd expect. Oh, it's kind of like my dream London. <laughs> so you don't have to walk as far to get around. <laughs> yeah, like, you just leave the National Theatre and then you're at the you know National Gallery. So I saw a couple of different places and you mentioned that the National Theatre. That is one place I went to. It's called the British Theatre, probably because of copyright or trademark reasons or whatever. They're showing three months of Shakespeare plays and you can see all the advertising on the walls, including one poster that says, Will I am Shakespeare, which I thought was both beautiful and reminded me of Will I Am from the Black Eyed Peas, and then I then started to imagine Will I Am in the starring role of the Scottish play. In Trafalgar Square, you see more people protesting, and I ran across the road to see if the Canadian Embassy was where it was meant to be, and it was. There's the Westminster Abbey and the nearby church as well. Ah, uh, the church that is near Westminster Abbey. There, do you know the church? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, rather than stained glass windows, in this near future of London, they have a holographic sort of spirograph 
on there. So it's cheaper and you get to change the design whenever you want. Doesn't that mean you won't be able to solve the DaVinci code? I'm pretty sure that was dependent on bits of windows and things. Dan Brown will be he'll be so upset. Oh, I can't believe they they finally spoiled the DaVinci code. One of my favorites was the London Eye that is referred to as the Millennium Wheel, which which is what it was initially anyway, wasn't it? I believe. But you you can take a spin in the big Ferris wheel and you can look out over the Thames and see Big Ben and you don't have to spend 50 quid to do it. You know, you have all them. You have Tower Bridge and the Tower of London. You have the House of Commons. You have the big circular cinema in Greenwich that I always wanted to go to, but I never had the chance. I had the chance during this demo, Matthew. It was very exciting. <laughs> From what I played, Watch Dogs Legion appears to hit every one of those postcard locations, as I said, that you would want from a video game set in London. And what about the smaller yet equally important details? You know, your double-decker buses, your black cabs, the packed chippies at two in the morning. I can't speak to that last one, although I imagine there will be some side quest that involves fish and chips in some way. But seeing as we're on the topic of food, uh, I did come across a market stall, a little market stall that was selling overpriced bacon and egg rolls. Oh, well, that's good. But yeah, you have all of your typical London things. Expensive food, as I said. You have red telephone and post boxes. You have your black cabs. You have your awful souvenir shops selling Union Jack and Blazing Tash. So tourism is still a thing in this dystopian future state that's troubled by bombings and the like. Well, if it isn't, then these shops are going to go down the swanee quite soon. Who would look at this and go... Oh yeah, I want to go on holiday there. That uh, looks good. Um, can you get the tube in the game? You can get the tube. That's actually how you fast travel oh. from one area to the next. Like one of the stations I went to, it had your advertising on the walls, the colour-coded map, the roundel, Matthew. The roundel. There's loads of other things. Like you can play darts in the pub. You can have a game of Keepy Uppy in the park. Does it call it Keepy Uppy? No, it calls it something stupid like kick up the football or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. The Mega Bouts Football <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> but there are touches of near future tech to almost everything, to vehicles, to surroundings, to the name of the Keepy Uppy. But it does all feel very London-like. Oh, that's good. You can see that they've done their homework. And you, you see that even more so than in Big Ben. You see that in the little details dotted about the environment. OK, but the, the thing that makes London tick, obviously, is its people. So what about those people? You know, is the game full of sort of Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins sort of rattling off horrendous Cockney rhyming slang, uh, which I definitely wasn't doing at the start of this video. I thought my accent was phenomenal. If you can Adam and Eve us, the accents in Watch Dogs Legion are even better than your stellar effort, Matthew. Oh, OK. When people think of London, they often envision a Guy Ritchie film, similar to, you know, again, your accent. But to poo-poo that would be wrong, because that is certainly an aspect of London, but that doesn't tell the whole story about it, because it's a fusion of all nationalities, and that is represented brilliantly in Watch Dogs Legion. So in my DedSec crew, there were people from Asia, Europe, America, just all, all across the world, different nationalities, different voices, different accents. And that's where your play as anyone gimmick, it really works in London, in such a diverse place where whomever you are, you're going to see yourself represented on screen. Now, how complex these characters are, Eh, it doesn't look entirely promising. The play as anyone could turn out to be a fun mechanic, but story-wise, we'll see if the game would have benefited from a sole protagonist. That one is hard to say. So, so yeah, your, your builder could be from anywhere in the world, including England. Matthew, I know your beloved England, so don't worry. There are, there are Northerners, Southerners, Good. Midlanders. Watch Dogs Legion isn't the getaway, the old PS2 game. It is a total diverse mix of people from all across the world, which is what you would expect again from a game in London. It's Guy Ritchie and Richard Curtis, the full spectrum of Britishness. Indeed. No, look, I, I'm not saying that there won't be any Dick Van Dykes in the final game, but I'm pretty confident that Ubisoft Toronto knows not to fall down that hole. The swearing, swearing is odd though. The swearing is f***ing great. So what's odd about the swearing? It needs work. So Alice Bell from Rock Paper Shock on the website, she played Watch Dogs 2. You should read her thoughts, which you can do on rockpapershotgun.com. I'll stick a link in the description. And she mentioned, and I heard a number of different phrases as well, but I didn't hear this specific one. 
she said that she heard this phrase, are you ready, are you sitting down, check out this knobhead minger. Now listen, <laughs> I'll be the first one to say that it's a shame this isn't a common insult in England. It should be, it should be adopted by everyone who lives in this country. But That's just two insults mashed together. But that's what I mean, There's the swearing and the insults, it's, it's just this weird word salad swearing that people on this side of the world would find very jarring, but maybe others won't. Like, I don't know if an American audience will hear that and they'll go, they'll just hear, check out this knobhead minger and go, yeah, that's probably something that they say over there. That thing is going to f***ing kill me. Enough of that, you shitting numpty. I want to know whether or not this game is structured like a Ubisoft game. Um, you've mentioned that this is a well-realised version of London, but have they basically boiled our great capital down to another map full of icons? Look, it's hard to tell how exactly this is going to play out over the course of the game, so I just want to give that caveat. But to answer your question, yes, sort of, sort of. So London is is split up into boroughs, as it is in reality. Lambeth, Southwark, Tower Hamlets, etc. And you're trying to start an uprising, you and all of Dead Sex, so in order to rally the troops, there are activities you can do, separate to the main missions and the recruitment missions. These activities involve things like tearing down Albion propaganda or sticking up your own dead sec ones, mm. uh, sabotaging enemy equipment and rescuing people that are being held hostage and all a few other things as well. That sounds very just cause to me. Cause enough trouble until you overthrow the area, you know? It does, and it definitely sounds like a, a checklist, which is what Ubisoft are known for. But I am reserving judgment on these for a couple of reasons, right? Mm -hmm. From what I saw, each borough only has one, sometimes two, and that was rare, instances of each activity. So what I'm hoping here is that a lack of saturation in each area will see more interesting varied missions. To be fair as well, completing all of these could be worthwhile for your actual character, because once you've done all these minor activities within a borough, you'll open up a larger mission. And this larger mission, creative director Clint Hawking, has said, try and parse this, Matthew. He has said these missions will have a, quote, big custom gameplay challenge. What a sexy way of putting it. <laughs> I can't wait to see that on the box. It does at least put it on the level of a main mission, to my ears anyway. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know. But if, if you complete that mission, then you'll get certain perks of in the area, like Albion's checkpoints will disappear operatives will be easier to recruit and you'll gain some rewards. So it could turn out to be useful or it could, again, going off of track record, it could just be something there to artificially fatten up the game. I, I am still looking forward to exploring London and Hearing all the wonderful insults that would have been spat out of a swear word generator, though. Ain't that the truth, you dirty muppet? <laughs> that enough of that. We'll all find out whether Watchdog Legion sticks the landing when it launches on October the 29th of this year. Uh, thanks very much for chatting to me today, Colin. Always a pleasure, Matthew. And do let us know if you are looking forward to Watchdog's Legion by leaving a comment. And if you enjoyed this video, it would be lovely if you gave it a thumbs up. It boosts our fragile egos. There's plenty of other Ubisoft-related goodness on the channel for you to watch, so just click on either of the two videos on screen now to learn more about Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And, of course, if you want to make sure you never miss any RPS videos in the future, just hit subscribe and ring the notification bell. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye!